What's up, you guys? Rant Roller back at y'all with a special, special sports video. The question is, is Allen Iverson, AI, the greatest small player to ever play basketball? Being, he's only being about six foot. All right, so I'm going to say the six foot two and under club. Is Allen Iverson the greatest small man of all time? I'm going to do a part two to Allen Iverson where I show you guys his highlights, even though they're all over YouTube. But I'm going to do my quote unquote reaction talking over his highlights. But right now, I'm just going to talk to you face to face, eye to eye. All right, let's mention a group of small guys for comparison. Obviously, Isaiah Thomas, John Stockton, Steve Nash. Steph Curry. I'll even go as far as to say Bob Cousy. I'll throw him in there. Um, and the list is pretty short. There are a few notable others. Okay, like uh, Mark Price. KJ Kevin Johnson from the Phoenix Suns fame. Um, Tim Hardaway. Not Tim Hardaway Jr., the six foot six shooting guard, but his father the six-foot point guard from Run TMC, the Golden State Warrior team, where he played alongside of Mitch Richmond and Chris Mullen. Okay, and there's a host of others. A tiny Archibald. I have to throw him in there for all you guys over 50. <laughs> right? Um, so, yeah. I have a special affinity for AI, so I'll be ready for you guys in the comments section. If you want to debate me, about, oh, I, hey, I was a ball hawk. He was a gunner. You guys want to listen to Skip Bayless, you know, talk down on AI like he didn't play his heart out every game, like he didn't play defense. All right. I'm going to tell you all a short story. I used to go down to Newport News, Virginia every summer as a kid. Once we got came back from Germany and I was living in Brooklyn, New York, growing up. Every summer, a lot of us inner city kids got shipped either north or down south to relatives' houses for the summer. It was a normal thing. Gave your parents a break. Um, but in this case, my mother would take me and my sister, my little sister, and we'd go to Newport News, Virginia, to a family friend's house. Basically, we did this about five or six summers in a row. One year, I ended up staying. I begged my mother. I was about to uh, start ninth grade of high school, the first year of high school. I begged my mother, please let me go to high school here. Please let me... You know, I, I want to play football and baseball. I want to play on the team. And um, she didn't know how good I was. She saw me playing in the streets, but she didn't know how good I was. She said, if you make the team, we'll stay. I ended up making the football team and the baseball team for Warwick High School in Newport News, Virginia. Okay? Um, AI played football for a rival high school. You guys can look up the high school he went to. Right? Um... And uh, I'm not going to say we clashed or we had run-ins because we're the same age. So we were both freshmen at that time. All right. Um, I played defensive end and offensive guard uh, <laughs> to my uh, utter hatred for the offensive line position. It was necessary. The coach begged me to play both sides of the ball. And um, I was smaller than I am now. I was six. I was still six foot one. But I was only 200 and about 15, 215 pounds playing the D-line and the O-line in high school, right? I didn't want to play either position. Honestly, I played quarterback in the street and street ball up in New York City in Brooklyn. And I wanted to be the quarterback, but they already had their quarterback. All right, enough about me. Me and AI schools were rivals, okay? So I only went to that school, Warwick High, for one year before my mother decided to move back to New York. She got bored of being in Virginia. It was the country. It was the South to her. It wasn't the dirty South that's so popular now. It was New York Northern people didn't want to be down South in those days. It was too slow, too boring for them. Even Virginia, and that's not even all the way down South. But anyway, I have an affinity for AI because we're the same age. And I feel like he kind of lived out. My fantasy that I wanted to live out, except mine wasn't in basketball, mine was in baseball and football. I'll get into my story in another video. But AI was just as good as a football player as he was a basketball player. 
all right, equally as good, okay? He was like Deion Sanders, to, to give you a comparison of a football player. But anyway, the question is, is AI the greatest small man of all time? I'm going to leave that up to you in the comments. I, I'm biased. I'm going to admit my bias toward AI. I love the guy. Right? I love him. He terrorized the NBA on the court and off the court. David Stern was scared to death of AI because he was trying to take the NBA global. And he did not want a street hip-hop image to damage his brand. And AI came to the games, laced up, gold chains, jewelry. He looked like a rapper. Do rag, corn rolls, baggy clothes. He scared the league to death. Okay, they could not ignore him. They could not bypass him or, you know, shun him because he was too talented. He was just too good. And he played his heart out. And he was a good guy. He wasn't no society menace just because of the way he looked, tattoos and corn rolls and jewelry. And he even tried to put out a rap album once upon a time that David Stern begged him not to put out. So it never came out. All right. Um, but anyway, he terrorized guys on the court. This is what we're really going to talk about. Okay. He intimidated referees. He intimidated the opposing players. Okay. He came along right toward the end of Michael Jordan's reign. Right about the end of it. Toward the end. I believe Iverson got drafted in 96. So that was coming toward the end of Mike's run. All right. Um, he, cro he famously crossed Mike over near the foul line, right, and jade him up. All right. Um, so Michael Jordan didn't like that. So they tried to say after that, that's when they all tried to say, oh, AI carried the ball. He was carrying the ball. He wasn't the only one carrying the ball. But they tried to pin it on AI as he was the carry king. Oh, he was carrying the ball. Listen, man, AI brought the street game to the NBA. Now, there were other players that brought street elements. Isaiah Thomas, Tim Hardaway, Kevin Johnson, KJ. A lot of guys who had master ball handling. All right? And AI was one of them. A lot of you uh, old school aficionados out there will say, oh, he was carrying the ball. He was kept Listen, that was part of the urban game. All right? And if the referees wasn't calling it, it is what it is. A lot of superstars get away with a whole lot of stuff. That doesn't get called on them. That gets called on other people. Or that would get called on you in high school or college. It is what it is. He was a money maker and a star. And super talented. Okay. Everybody got away with something. That was great in sports. Any sport. Alright. The best players got the most foul calls. It is what it is. The 12th man on the bench wasn't going to the line six, seven times a game. It was the stars. And it's just fact of life, people. Alright. Get over it. Anyway, AI terrorized guys, man. Listen, he dragged that 76er team, I believe it was in 2000 or 2001, to the finals against Shaq and Kobe's Lakers. And he was lucky to get one game off of that team because they were totally outgunned. He had Matumbo with him, but Matumbo was about 37 years old by that time and couldn't do nothing with Shaq. Couldn't do nothing with him. All right, they would have been better off keeping Theo Ratliff, but they traded Theo Ratliff for Matumbo and just to give him that extra oomph because they were a defensive-oriented team. Eric Snow, George Lynch, uh, uh, you know, and, and those guys. You know, they had a bunch of good role players, solid role players who were defensive-oriented. None of them could score. The second-best scorer on that team was like Aaron McKee, Okay. And he only could give you about 15 points a game. That's how bad that team was. All right? And he dragged them to the finals. They, yeah, they had heart. They had guts. They played smart. But they were not talented at all on the offensive end. He was the only one. He had to take all the shots. There was nobody else to score the ball. So a lot of you people out there that want to say, oh, Allen Iverson was a selfish gunner, glory hound, blah, 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 blah. Shut your mouths. You don't know what you're talking about. You just don't know what you're talking about. There was nobody else to score the ball. Okay, so he had to shoot the ball 25, 30 times a game. He had to score 30, 40 for them to win. It was the only way. They were only scoring about 90 to 95 points to begin with. And if he didn't get 30 or 40 of them, they would lose. It's just that simple. 
And he played defense. He led the league in steals, I think, once or twice. He was always at least in the top five in steals. I mean, he did what he could. I mean, he had to use all of his energy on the offensive end, and he still played defense. The man was only six foot, maybe five, 11 and a half, and 160 pounds, man. 160 pounds soaking wet. And he was a freaking terror. All right? So, yes, there's some other guys. Isaiah Thomas, like I said, John Stockton, Steve Nash, right? And, and, and a few others that I mentioned. But let's keep it to the top three or four. Let's just throw Tiny Archibald in there because he did lead the league in scoring and assists. Okay, so I have to give Tiny Archibald credit for that. But I'm just going to leave it at that. And maybe Bob Cousy, you guys from the 60s. But, it, you know, Bob Cousy was great too. I'm not going to take nothing away from Bob Cousy. All right? Won multiple titles, all of those titles with the uh, with Bill Russell and that, that 60 Celtics. I can't discredit him, all right? But he wasn't no AI, okay? John Stockton, as great as he was. Boy, and I'm going to do a video on John Stockton, too. John Stockton was a silent assassin, right? You know, choir boy looking uh, <laughs> terror in his own right. Okay, that Utah Jazz team just never could put it all together. They were always one star away from a championship squad. They had the great Mark Eaton, the great Carl Malone. They even at one point had the great Jeff Hornacek. But not all at once. By the time they got Hornacek, Eaton wasn't there no more. And when Eaton was there, they didn't have Hornacek yet. You know, so they could never quite put it all together. You know, um, who else did I mention? Isaiah Thomas. Of course, right now, Isaiah is, is by most in the media considered to be the greatest small man of all time. And I won't knock him. I won't even try to tear down that argument. He has the rings to prove it. He went to three straight finals. He could have won three. And I hate to admit this, but they almost got, they pretty much got robbed against the Lakers for one of them. I'll admit that. You know what I mean? You know, but the Lakers still got it. So he won two out of three chips. You know, Isaiah still won two. But he had Joe Dumars with him. He had Bill Lambeer. He had Mark Aguirre, who was a sure enough scorer. He had more on his team than AI ever had. Okay, the only time AI had another scorer was when he went, when he got shipped off to the Nuggets and he played with Car a young Carmelo Anthony. That was it. But at that time, he gave the Nuggets a few good years, and then all the pounding that he took throughout the years started to catch up to his small body, and he couldn't play at that extremely high level anymore, and the NBA pushed him out the door. Okay? Uh, tried to get him to come off the, the, be the bench in Memphis. Are you kidding me? And, and he, was right, he was right to say, I'm not coming off the bench. Are you crazy? You know? So he, he, he got ushered out of the league unceremoniously, and I was so happy to see his Hall of Fame induction because he deserved it. Led the league in scoring a couple times, won the MVP award, all right? And like I said, everybody was scared of him. Kobe, Vince Carter, I'm not going to say Jordan was scared of him, but he was aware of him. No, a lot of them guys didn't want that smoke with AI at all. On the court or off the court. He was a tough guy. He was a tough guy. On the court and off the court. All right? Gave guys the business. But I'm going to leave it up to y'all, man. The next video I'm going to do on AI, I'm going to show his highlights and I'm going to talk over them. You know, but for right now, this is a conversation with me and you. All right? If you agree with me, you agree with me. If you disagree with me, you disagree with me. If you want to debate back and forth in the comment section, so be it. But I'm not going to let y'all talk down on my man AI. I'm not going to let y'all say that he was selfish. He was a this. He was that. He was a street dude. He, he didn't practice. Blah, blah, blah. Listen, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Okay? Larry Brown himself will tell you how great AI was. All right? So anyway, till next time, to the next video, Rant Roller out. Is AI the greatest small man of all time? Give me your opinion. Rat roll out.